And you know the reason why? You know the reason why? I'm gonna give you the answer, right? Because he's lazy as shit. He got the gift of gab, he runs his damn mouth, but he ain't gonna lift a damn finger to do nothing. And if he does, he only does it for a short period of time for show. Then after that, he's ripping run up down the road, trading guns. Going to so-called meetings, that the only meeting I got when I leave outside of this community is a meeting to go and build this community up. To go get building materials. To speak to people about what we're gonna do to make this community run in advance. I ain't got no meetings out there privately to go and trade guns and do all this other extracurricular activity. I'm not saying you can't trade no guns, but if you make it your damn lifestyle, we got some issues and troubles and problems. But the reason why you're going to keep getting that answer because he's lazy as hell. And I'm not saying nothing to none of y'all that I haven't said to him to his face. And in front of all of these elders. I'm still at one string banjo, still saying the same thing. And you ain't going to advance when you got a lazy ass leader. The people are only going to go as far as the leader goes. Proverbs 11:16. King Solomon said, Ruthless men retain riches. Think about it. You got a pastor who trades guns, sells virgins for profits, evicts members, and uses his homestead communities to attract married women. Then he manipulates scripture and justifies the whole ordeal living in adultery. This is satanic employment. Everything you have built, Dow, is from the fruits of evil. Go ahead, bro. There was a fear that I had to overcome of uh, going to Pastor Dow to ask him for money. But, you know, after years and stuff of living with him and stuff, it became easier to to uh, go to him. I used to, whenever I need some, he, uh, you know what I'm saying, come to breakfast and I would get with him. Sometimes I walk down the road with him and talk to him. But yeah, he'd be like, come on, come to the house. Or either sometimes I go and knock on the door, be like, Pastor, I need some for my family. And uh, he would bring me a roll of money and just say, here, bless you. And that was it. I mean, I got, I got some, some uh, sisters here, I mean, uh, some people here on the community, they give a lot of money. Are y'all following me? And if they're not receiving enough back, all they got to do is just ask. They can have more. Okay, since he's already getting half a dude's check, they'll probably already set aside an allowance, let's say about $250 for this guy, for him to take his family to dinner and maybe the movies. I mean, he knows this guy is afraid because you heard the guy say he had a fear of even asking him for money. And notice, Dow had corrected himself when he was about to say that the sisters asked him for money, but then he corrected himself. So I know the wives of these men are going up to Dow asking him for money. In addition to that, God has not given us a spirit of fear. So why be afraid? Okay. If this guy went, let's let's see this guy go and ask him for five thousand dollars and see what Dow says. Then it, it it helps the morale. It gives people a sense of belonging. Am I making any damn sense? It's, this is just hard than hearing this shit because we've been grossly misrepresented. Gross. I've been lied upon again, and I'm the one that's been made out to look like the damn villain and a king. If I'm a king, I'm a poor one, man. I'm, I ain't doing too damn good at it, man, because I'm what I'm the. I'm, this, we talking about some damn Edward Longshanks rule right here. See, these polygyny advocates in these YouTube streets are swiftly trying to distance themselves from Dow, claiming he is doing polygyny the wrong way. How many more black men will build communities across state lines? Just tell me that. I mean, it took Dow over 20 years to get to this level. And I stated before that I believe Dow battled this demon for many years before he changed his position on polygyny. That's why we follow the law of God and not men. I broke down 1 Corinthians chapter 7 in the last video, and these dudes still come here wanting to argue. When there is no sanctification for concubines and multiple wives in the New Testament. And by the way, good luck trying to recruit enough women to sustain polygyny in modern Babylon, let alone holy women who've not been defiled, okay? And also women who are not a part of the workforce because they're not going to want to partake in this. Most importantly, practicing polygyny, all it'll do is land you in a lake of fire. 
Five years ago, I coined the concept Satanic Employment. It was one of the first videos I uploaded to YouTube. This was before I even knew who Dow was. I also coined the concept Double M W D O, making money with devil obligations. So I'm going to play this concept I introduced and come back to break down the rhetorical damage control, the gaslighting, if you will, that Pastor Proud conveyed to his audience. And also, I'm going to explain how this concept relates to Dow. Of uh, what I said is covert satanic employment. Number one is uh, John and Susan, they, they work different shifts. Now, let's say when John gets home, Susan has to go out and she works uh, a 10 to 6 in the morning overnight shift. So John is at home with the kids, or Susan is at home with the kids and John is working the overnight shift. But we'll say in this case, Susan, when she goes to work overnight, the enemy is saying, I have 40 to 50 hours a week to get either John or Susan to fall into the sin of adultery. So, Brother Jamie, I hope you are watching as well because this is exactly what happened to you, brother. Through the crafty counsel of Dowell and his elders, he made sure they had access to the women during those 40, 50, or even 60 hours you men worked on the compound. So, the concept of satanic employment is the same. Although you were a victim of satanic employment, it still applies to you. Also, it applies to you, Eric Gonzalez, because you evermore were a victim, although I'm not sure if you worked on the compound. But because Dow was involved and he's under satanic employment, this is and he was involved with your wife. This is how it applies to you as well, Eric Gonzalez, because you were a victim of someone who was satanically employed. You understand what I'm saying? Now, that demon in Dow, that monitoring spirit, used him to build straightway and the practice of overt and covert satanic employment. Brother Jamie, the work itself that you did at Straightway was not satanic on your part. The hard work he always showed that he did with his hands, talking about Dow, that is satanic. Because think about it. Dow has built all of these homesteads, these nice, beautiful homes, so he can make your wife comfortable to go to bed with him. And he has promoted elders to do the same so that they have some incentive or some stake in his wicked kingdom. He makes sure that you don't see more than $100 per month. You see what I'm saying? So he pays his workers low money to keep them under him. It's like slavery. So he has made you a victim of overt and overt satanic employment. Dowell is covertly satanic employed because the way he makes his money is satanic. That's why Christ in Matthew chapter 19 verse 21 told the rich young ruler to go sell everything he owned and give it to the poor. Or at a minimum, fall into the sin of adultery in their heart. Because remember Christ said, he, he who looks upon a woman and lusts upon a woman in his heart is just as if he committed the act of adultery uh, physically. So the enemy says, I have 40 to 50 hours a week to get John or Susan to commit adultery in their heart. Now, the 17 works of the flesh are always at play. Let's just be honest. When we're at work, the 17 works of the flesh are at play because our co-workers and the people that we work with are not of the same mindset. And I'm speaking to believers. They're not of the same mindset that the enemy is using these tactics to, to draw a person in to commit abominations against the Most High. They're thinking about, like I said, these three things. Sleep and work. How can I rest so that I can get back up, go to work, drink my coffee, come home, dookie on my toilet, and go back to sleep and do it all over again. I know I'm being very graphic here, but you know, I, I, I just felt led to be descriptive and, and give you an idea of, of how people are led astray without even knowing it. So Dow, again, is double M W D O. If he were to ever repent, because what he has done is so overt and the impact has damaged so many lives, he would have to sell all that land and return what he stole to the victims and give the remnants to the poor. And in a nutshell, that is how this concept applies to Dow. 
his elders would have to do the same thing with their portion. That'll also include relinquishing those wives they unlawfully have, some who they have children with, and these women may pursue child support and alimony. You see how deep the rabbit hole of sin and the repentance that's required? You see how deep the rabbit hole goes? See how dangerous polygyny is? Polygyny is for an unadulterated, patriarchal society. King David was a part of a patriarchal society. A woman was not able to divorce him and take him to court for all that he has, or any man in that patriarchal kingdom. And God would not have us men lawfully practice polygyny and be penalized by matriarchy. You see what I'm saying? So he's not the author of confusion because then men would do like Adam and say, the woman that you gave me or the women that you gave me. I realize that a lot of people out there don't like me, but I'm going to say this again. I hear all the noise and I ignore the majority of all of the noise. But I will tell you this. I have been doing this for over 30 years, living set apart, uh, doing communities for over 30 something years. See, listen to what he said. He said, living set apart. See, he speaks down on those who live in population centers, what he calls population centers, and he big ups himself for living way in the country near racist whites who hate blacks. That's not being set apart. That's not the type of set apart that Christ talked about. Because if you want to go there, Christ had no place to lay his head and still did a 40-day fast. John the Baptist was clothed in camel hair, eating wild honey and locusts. The apostles were beaten and poorly clothed, and they, they were constantly hungry from fasting. Dude, you're nowhere near doing that. Matter of fact, you're living in sin. You're living in adultery. Okay? These men, these godly men, were not driving expensive Cadillac trucks. And this ain't the first time that I've been here, and it won't be the last time. I understand I'm a hated man. I can only imagine what Jesus went through. Jesus, and I'm not Jesus by any way, shape, fashion, or form, but he went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil because y'all was with him. They couldn't lay any sin to his charge, and yet they killed the most righteous man in the universe. Now, because I have a Judas that defected, and now all this information is coming out about him because you know what the finger pointing is, right? The finger pointing is, is to point your finger towards me and then get all these people who are not adding nothing to me in my life. Why would you think I care about your opinion? All it's done is just help, help bolster and help foster and help strengthen the base that I already have. Yeah, you, you hear this? Yeah, yada, 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 yada. See, it's difficult for me to listen to rhetorical gaslighting. He went on to say later on in this video how this dilemma has actually increased his Patreon subscribers. So you just further proving my point. Although I do believe that even that is a lie because your name has just been muddy through these YouTube streets. Nonetheless, Dow. You are still double M W D O. You're making money with double obligations. You're satanically employed. So all of your hard work is in vain. And perhaps you should read the story of Lazarus and the rich man. How Abraham was hanging out with Lazarus who drank from the river of life described in Revelation chapter 22. And <laughs> I'm going to give you some nuggets here. Lazarus was there to torment the rich man. And Abraham, who was a rich man, was a witness against the other rich man. You see, the scriptures say, woe to you. In Luke 6, 24, it says, woe to you who are rich. You already receive your comfort. Proverbs twenty two sixteen says, he who oppresses the poor to increase his riches and he who gives to the rich, both will surely come to poverty. 
And we know that's not talking about poverty in this lifetime. That's talking about going to the lake of fire. Because going to the lake of fire is the ultimate form of poverty beyond your imagination. It's eternal poverty. You see what I'm saying? But thou, you have fattened your pockets and fleece in the flock. And I suggest you repent before the Most High cast you into the lake of fire.